Welcome to Wedding Waffle, a very chatty podcast with three industry professionals covering all things wedding, including your dilemmas, shocking stats, and just general wedding chit chat. Get cozy and join us as we discuss anything and everything to do with weddings. Absolutely nothing is off limits. Brought to you by Bocane Bells, together with Flowers at the Dutch Barn and the Red Rose Cake Company. Hello and welcome to episode two of Wedding Waffle. My name's Claire and I'm from Bouquet and Bells and I'm here with Caroline from Flowers at Dutch Bar. Hello. And Julie from the Red Rose Cake Company. Hi everyone. Right, so first of all I hope you enjoyed episode one. Um, we do introduce ourselves a little bit more over there so if you wanted to go and listen to that one first. Um, otherwise, same sort of format, we're just going to be hopping around talking about everything and anything to do with weddings um, and we do like to waffle on so <laughs> hope you're sitting comfortably so let's just go for it then um, first topic today is do you think we're talking about pressure so do you think there's a lot of pressure for your wedding day to be the best day of your life and was yours the best day of your life Julie start with you yeah um, there was no pressure because we were older, we've yeah. been we've both been married before, so it's only the pressure that we placed on ourselves. And I think initially that pressure was perhaps, oh my God, what what do I, where do I start? Mm-hmm. You know that overwhelming feeling of I've got to plan a wedding. Yeah. Um, but actually, once you pick something that you know rec- is is you, mm-hmm. then everything flows from that. Um, and that's probably something that I'd say to people now. Don't think about your cake design until you've thought about your room design mm. and the colour schemes and things like that. Your cake should slot into it. And kind of that's what we did with our wedding. I, I don't think Paul had any choices. I, think I, t- <laughs> I told him what we were doing. Um, but isn't that normal? Yeah. I see lots that's of exactly. prize. The grooms occasionally get to taste the cake um, yeah, or carry the box. That. Yeah, but, um, enjoy the cake yeah I have yeah I I didn't I don't think there was any pressure I do think there's a lot more pressure on brides these days because I think they've got to keep up with or they feel they've got to keep up with trends and with other people's weddings and so I think yeah the amount of social media pressure that's out there imposes itself on on all sorts of event or occasion yeah. important i feel like it's a never-ending thing like you could just go on and on and on i think that's where you've got to be careful you've got to rein yourself in when mm. you're planning and have a bit of an idea of what you want and not it'd be very easy to say yes to everything you know yeah. and just get carried away <laughs> um so i think yeah you've got to kind of pull yourself in a little bit haven't you yeah what, what, what do you think um i well, with planning our wedding, I feel pressure because of my job. So being a wedding florist, it's very much like, what flowers are you having? What dress? Mm. Where's your dress from? Um, mm. And I am really worried that someone else will have the same dress as me because I'm in the industry. Mm. Um, whereas I don't think anyone would be stupid enough to spend that amount of money that I spent on my dress. <laughs> <laughs> that was a moment of madness. But it's that thing of, yeah, I do feel that pressure, but... Mm. Since COVID happened and I've seen these smaller weddings and things and we're having to postpone or cancel ours, I'm not sure what we're doing yet, but we're very, I'm very much like, I'm not feeling the same pressure now because I'm just like, well, we just want to get married. So how we do it is up to us. But initially loads of pressure because of my job. But I think social media is awful for it. Pinterest and Instagram, they make it because you're exposed to the world, aren't you? And Mm. I think it does make a massive pressure and look at what she's wearing and look what he's wearing yeah you know? um, i don't like his hair mm. like it's a massive pressure you compare in that yourself yes naturally because you always compare yourself to other people no yes. matter what you're doing and i think it's yeah because it's there it's right in your face yeah. it's quite easy to become feel mm. snowed under yeah I and think. i think when it comes to photography with weddings and the pressure of it i know a lot of couples now say please don't post images on social media we want to post our images which we like because they don't want mm. you know an ang- a funny angle from the photo- you know from someone else's mobile phone picture so there's a lot of pressure there as mm. well I think mean, that's very it's tricky. quite intrusive when you think mm. about it isn't it that, that yeah. people do that and take it upon themselves to take a snapshot and then share it with everybody yeah. mm. when you've not had a chance as the bride and groom to screen that or have any say yeah. about it I would feel 
you know, I think I'd yeah. feel quite strongly if yeah. that was... I mean, on, on our wedding day, we hadn't told anybody except just us. So we'd both taken a week off work. We hadn't told anybody. Mm. But my stepson did. He took a photo mm. of us at the registry office and put it on social media and said... Mm. And so all through our meal, we were getting... Ping, 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 ping of families saying, have you just got married? Um, and we took it as we just released something straight away. We just put in a picture straight away and mm, said, yes, yeah. we have. Um, this was a quick, you know, didn't mention it to anybody. It's not that we don't love you. It's just that we, it was quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, that yeah. that forced us into doing that. And I think, ready. you know, that's mm. 10 years ago and social media is wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. It's like with um, true. my my brothers were doing and they said please don't have phones it didn't stop people but they said do not post images on social media if you want a picture of you at the wedding that's mm. your choice but don't post any of us and there mm. isn't a picture unless they put it up on social media of their wedding because it's the right. same with people with children isn't it a yeah. lot of people saying the same with children yes um yeah yeah so i think Absolutely. um yeah there's a lot of pressure in some ways i think yeah some people i think like for me personally it was definitely the best day of my life and I think John would say the same (laughs) Um, but I think the main reason for that is because there's no other day like it you're never going to experience anything like your wedding day again because it's so different in that you've planned this with your other half and all the attention is on you naturally is it's just such an awesome celebration yeah and, and getting all the people that you want to be in one place at the same time mm-hmm. celebrating with you. Yes. I just think it is, um, but you're I, right. I do think people can get, and me included, can get so anxious about, uh, or during the build-up to mm. the wedding day, and so anxious about everything going according to plan on the day itself, when you don't need to worry about that, because quite often, story, the best wedding stories I've heard of things that, haven't been planned mm. and they've happened very unexpectedly mm. whatever that may be a mini catastrophe even could turn into something quite hilarious mm. and be something that you remember the day for yeah. so yeah. i think it's it's hard to say to people don't get stressed because <laughs> <it's, laughs> you're naturally gonna be quite anxious I think, about it, it, I think, I think, think you're going to because it's a huge investment mm. Not yes. only of financially, but of time. It's just, um, I know a friend of mine is a, is a wedding planner and she says that she estimates 250 hours for every wedding. That's an awful wow, lot of time. Oh yeah. um, you know, researching things. And if you are an absolute perfectionist, I guess you could mm. double that if you're looking for everything to be spot on. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, I go back to my, you know, be true to you. Be true to who you are, yes. um, and so. don't forget that. Keep that in the back of your mind with everything, because that gives you just a reminder of where yeah. you're going. Mm. Yes, I was very lucky to have a mum that loves Excel, <laughs> and she just had <laughs> spreadsheets for everything. Um, my sister and I got married eight weeks apart to our oh, partners, really? and that was we got engaged very close together. And my dad said you can get married minimum two months apart from each other because the financial Mm. impact but also the stress and um, asking relatives to come to both weddings you know as well couldn't really be any closer Um, so she was extremely stressed and my mum was extremely stressed and they're very much perfectionists whereas I'm a bit more blasé but they kept everything in order with Excel spreadsheets and it was down to the, the, the last penny you know of mm. the budget everything was was monitored um, I think if you're that organized it's a very satisf- satisfying process yeah but it's that in it in itself is quite a pressure isn't it mm. I think it is if you're you, not yeah, that way inclined you have to keep up with yourself as well mm. I've just thought you know what yeah 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 but then, yeah. like you, you've been engaged nearly three years. Something like that. Yeah. So that's quite, you know, you can spread the costs then yeah. as well with a longer engagement. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way I look at it. Well, look, when I chose my dress, um, yeah, it was way over the budget in my head. Um, <laughs> I went to Carl and said, "This is how much it is," and he went, "Will it change our lifestyle?" And I said, mm. "No." And then COVID happened. I wear it again. But you know. <laughs> He was like, as long as you're comfortable and you're happy. So mm. for sometimes, you know, the pressure's there in a different way. It might be financial pressure. It might not be, you know, what's on social media and stuff. But you've yeah. got to you've got to do what's right for you, don't you? And Definitely. be realistic. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, we did a poll on our Instagram 
Um, we asked, uh, do you think there's a lot of pressure for your wedding day to be the best day of your life? And it was 50-50. Really? So 50% said so much pressure and 50% said not really. So I wonder if that's down to your personalities mm. and whether you just manage it better or whether it's just that they, they've just enjoyed the process. Yes. Okay, lots of, yeah. There's no one simple no. fix to it, is it? No. It can come from so many different I places. I think now though as well, because there's been very few weddings over the last 12 months that mm. everyone's wedding is going to be amazing because everyone's been let free. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. yay, you can party. Yeah. And everyone's weddings are different for different reasons. And yes. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. I've had quite a few who've changed changed their original designs. Oh, I have. Mm. That, which is lovely mm. because they've moved on. It's not 2019 or 2020. Yes. It's now 21 or 22. Mm. Yeah. So trends have changed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, I that's love that. Yeah. It's fun. It's yeah. So sort of following on from that then, um, do you think you would, Caroline, or <laughs> did you feel nervous on your wedding day and how did you manage to calm your nerves? I put this topic in here because it was a, um, a sort of worry um, that was expressed by a lot of brides and grooms to me on socials when I asked, you know, mm. about this. Um, a lot of people were nervous about being nervous <laughs> and how they could manage that on the day. Um, so... Hmm. Julie, what what do you think? Um, I think because I was older mm. and it was a small wedding, it was all family, all very close friends. Um, I wasn't nervous. I was really excited. Mm. Um, I was really excited. We both got ready at the same house, so we were both together that morning. That's nice. um, yeah, yeah um, and a friend was driving us to the registry office, but everybody'd left. And so we both got ready in different rooms mm. and then sort of met on the landing. Okay, oh, you ready? You ready? That's really yeah. cute. And that was just lovely because oh. it was just us two. And Paul said to me, I knew I, that's exactly the dress I would have chosen for you. Oh. And we neither of us had talked about, really, we hadn't talked about um, colour schemes or anything because we were old and we just both wanted to be really comfortable and, mm. and we didn't know what we were going to do. Yeah. Um, I had no idea, apart from I knew he'd bought some cowboy boots, some black cowboy boots, because I went to Sheffield with him. <laughs> but I didn't know what he was, else he was going to wear. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was nice to do that. So I oh. think because, because of that, yeah. there was just us, it was very intimate, mm. all of it was very intimate. There weren't any nerves, it was really excited. I think he got a bit nervous when we were speaking our words because he was trying to make jokes and the registrar <laughs> had to keep saying to him, this is legal. <laughs> you have to say this because it's legal. Um, so he was, but I think that was just nerves with him, whereas yeah. actually I was really calm then. Um, and I, as a person, I think I'm better in a crisis I'm I cope with an emergency situation very well mm. and so I think I once we got to that point I'm I'm much calmer he was the one who was dithery yeah um, so, so funny yeah, that's because that's you pre-agreed what you thought would be would suit you and be yeah. best for you and went away from the tradition I guess of not seeing each other until you were at the end of the aisle it's quite yeah. American as well that actually now yeah. isn't it they do that first look yes they you. do mm. I've seen a lot of that yeah, yeah. yeah where you see it you know where the bride comes up or they hold hands, hands around the corner. Yes, I yes. love that. I do like that because I think like you cute. sometimes need to have that reassurance from mm, each other. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, you are going to turn up. I'd be like, I'm like, you look. I would so do that. <laughs> are you nervous about anything um, for your wedding? No, I'm not nervous. I don't get nervous very often. Mm. Um, but I am worried that I'll cry. I'm a crier, like literally, I cry at everything. Are you an ugly crier? Um, <laughs> or you a crying. contained crier? I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a proper ugly crier. Um, and it's that, I think my biggest, I know that I will feel sick, that kind of bit where, you know when the, the groom turns around and looks at you, yeah. and I'm about, like, <gasps> it's me, I know it is. And my dad's terrible, so oh my, oh my God, at my brother's wedding. So it was really sweet, um, they'd asked, um, my sister-in-law's brother to do a reading and then they'd asked me to do one and they gave me the longer one because I'm the better public speaker um, and he did his, it was beautiful. I started mine, looked up, looked at my, <laughs> looked at my brother who had tears in his eyes, looked at my dad who had tears in his eyes and I went, 
oh my god and I just burst out crying and my sister-in-law there's a photo of my sister and looking back at the photographer like what is she doing I just like so, so we, but it's because of, it's because everyone else around but you my dad know. and my brother have this look and their eyes well up and the bottom lips go and I was like ooh, ooh, and they both did it and I, I just know that's going to happen because yeah. um, if it happens when I'm doing a speech at my so, brother's wedding mm. everyone's looking at me like I'm an absolute twerp um, it's the I best know, not to look happen. at anybody, Caroline. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just, I just know what's going to happen. I'll, I'll look at my dad and then I'll go and I'll just be crying all the way down. It'll be horrendous. Mm. Yeah, so someone's car cries, it's fine. So I'm not nervous, I'm more everywhere. worried about the snot. Yeah. Yeah. Could so you I'm do not waterproof makeup? Can they do waterproof oh, yeah. makeup? Oh, yeah. I might just have to wear no makeup until <laughs> afterwards. Like, oh, God, that is my biggest, that's my biggest that's worry, biggest actually. Worry. Mm, about well, the snot. Oh, <laughs> And the snorting, I snort. Oh, I can't help it. Oh, God. <laughs> you see, I'm an ugly crier. I'm just I'm like a Ribena berry by the time yeah. you've done that. I'm doing out of tissues, <laughs> grow tissue. <laughs> yeah, forget the flower petals. They've <laughs> got tissues. Oh, God. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm not nervous about that. But, yeah. yeah well, I, just when I, I didn't expect to be nervous at all, because like I said, I'm quite blasé about things and quite chilled out. But it wasn't until I was getting out of the bridal car outside the front gates of the church that I had to do breathing exercises because I was starting to hyperventilate a little bit oh really and I was getting it was almost like a year and a half two years of planning was for that moment Mm -hmm. and it just hit me um and my my dad was there my maid of honor and bridesmaids and I just took a minute and just closed my eyes and just did a bit of breathing to try (laughs) yeah but then I was wearing the most ridiculous high heels ever and as soon as I got into the church my knees just went really and they were like jelly the whole way oh, walking down you. the aisle the whole way through the service because it was such a formal church service and our vicar that we'd known for like a year um decided to go on a cruise for oh. our wedding so we had a stand-in vicar so someone was marrying us that I'd never met mm. which threw me a little bit as well mm. um and it was just, I think it was the formalities of everything. So that's when I, I absolutely buckled and I can't really remember anything. But I thankfully didn't fall over because I was really worried about actually falling because over. Because of the heels. Yeah, because mm. of the heels and the fact my knees were just going mad under my dress. You and just I, hold on to your dad for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we <laughs> had to do the whole um, church uh, service when you have to do, you have to kneel. Yeah. And then get back up. And I couldn't get up. And God, John got up and he was like looking at me and <laughs> saying, come on then. <laughs> So I put my hand out to like, help. <laughs> but that, yeah, that was it for me. I think once that um, anxiety, once those nerves had passed, then I was absolutely fine and just. It's a little bit of being on. overwhelmed by overwhelmed, just yeah. sudden rush, which I wasn't expecting, caught me totally off guard. So, what advice would you give to brides to be? Don't wear heels. <laughs> gin. gin in the hand. Gin in the hand. <laughs> yeah. Take some gin. Tissues. Don't, gin. No yeah. heels. Don't wear, but I guess you can't. I mean, how do you control yourself when you get to a point laugh like that? I just laugh. laugh. Yeah, that's me. I mm. giggle. Yeah. Mm. And hope that the person you're with can give you some encouraging yeah. words of just, you know, go and have fun. It's almost like you just want to, I just wanted someone to say to me, just go and do it. You're about yeah. to get married. And I was yeah. just psyching it up to be this huge deal. When actually it was just, the second I saw John, I was just sort of... Did he cry? John? No, he didn't. Oh, no, and I was, yeah, I was very disappointed mm. with that. In fact, no okay. one cried. <laughs> I can't remember anyone crying. So yeah. I almost, so yeah, I just gave my mum a kick like, cry <laughs> why are you crying at me yeah so funny, yeah it? but i think people deal with the present very mm. differently you should have had my dad there my dad would have cried for you yeah. yeah maybe it was better than yeah i'm not very good I, I cry at everything mm. so mm. if i think something is quite touching mm. i'll cry <laughs> but even some of those micro weddings we did last mm. year you know where i stayed back just to watch i'm the sad person in the corner sniffling oh, that's amazing. Um, and i've had to go and sit yeah. out in the car and gather my thoughts <laughs> because you think but how beautiful was mm. that and you know they they took that stance despite everything that's going on they've taken that step and i'm yes you know yeah. I'm rooting in the corner. Yeah. I quite oh, don't tell the bride. So. <laughs> <laughs> and half yeah. them are rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Get married underwater. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so um the biggest worry for brides in the UK is the way they'll look in the photographs. So would you ever get rid of your wedding photos <laughs> if you really disliked them, Julie? 
you first. What do yes, because I'm quite ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, so, no. If that's no. rubbish, yeah. no. Um, I'm not. I'll never open it again. Mm. I probably select the ones that I really, really liked. Mm. I kind of. I think. Probably, I would say. I mean, I couldn't really do anything about my photographer. It was my son. Um, so I couldn't have changed him halfway through. Mm. But actually, he did some f- amazing mm. photography. We were sitting down for the meal, and there were open doors out onto the River Avon. And he suddenly grabbed us and said, quickly, come outside, halfway through my pasta. Um, <laughs> so I ran out with my fork, and there was a, a rainbow. Oh, and he caught it. the rainbow behind us. Oh. So I think probably it's... You need... I think the photographer is one of the most integral people at your wedding Mm -hmm. and you need to research, research, research that person so that they're they're so intrusive, they're with you all day, so you need to be sure and confident that that person is the right one for you, who will capture you, who will get the best moments, who will be there doing the sneaky bit when you're on the dance floor, you know, because that person can make or break your day Mm. and those are memories aren't they those are memories Mm. you're going to keep yes and weddings is so fast paced that often moments will only happen once yes and if you miss it it's It's not going to you know and I think that's yeah you're right you've got to think really carefully about your photographer I think so I mean you know when you speak it's one of the questions I always ask who's your photographer yes I'm I'm always intrigued to know who who other people are I think the ideas of doing like a a pre-shoot an engagement shoot Mm. or something like that I think they're great yes I think that gives you a chance to be with somebody and think either, yes, this is the wise person. It, it either confirms it or, or not. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it acts like an icebreaker as well yeah. between you and building that friendship and relationship mm. between your photographer because you've got to be comfortable with your photographer on your wedding day, haven't you? Having that list, you know, in my era, bearing in mind I'm a little bit older than you guys, you know, where, where the photographer used to stand and then different <laughs> groups of people would come Next. over and stand in front of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there would be a list of all those. Mm, yeah. I hate that. Yeah. I love that they're so much freer and so much more natural these days. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, if you, Caroline, obviously you you going through that process, mm. how much importance did you put on your... Um, so for us, it was about Carl feeling comfortable with the photographer as a yeah. person. So um, I actually found our wedding photographer at a wedding fair. His stand was opposite. Mm. Um and I was attracted to one of his particular pictures. Um, and so I got chatting to him and I was like, oh, he's really nice. And so then I told mm-hmm. Carl and the photographer came to the workshop to do some work with me. Um, and Carl really liked him. And I showed him his website and he went, yep, yeah, that's great. So we didn't look at lots of photographers. Mm-hmm. It was more about feeling comfortable. Yeah. Um, and now the photographer, I'd class him as a friend. You know, um, we've not even had our wedding yet, but we yeah. talk on a daily basis. Um, mm. well, not daily basis. We get every so often yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's this thing of um, yeah it was I think it was just about finding the right person and we happened to really like his style um, was really important yeah. um, didn't want anything too dark didn't want anything too light mm. wanted to look like you were there on the day um, yeah. so yeah I think yeah. it's just it's, yeah, it's really I think important. every photographer's got their own set style haven't they Absolutely. and you've got to think really carefully about what you want from yes. photographs um, if you want something more extreme and highly edited then great mm. go for it if you want something more creative go for it but if yeah. you want what you see is what you get sort of um, yeah. natural photography yeah. then there's just options for every style aren't there absolutely and I think if you, you know it's it's one of the downsides if you don't do your research mm. then don't complain when you're disappointed yes. mm. because you didn't put the effort in at the yeah, outset yes. and, and I mean you know I am quite ruthless I do think it's important that you do that so I don't think I'd get rid of mine though because you're never going to get them back again if you like them or not you, I, know. Yeah. I think that's my other thing yes um, and it's not I guess what people people's biggest worry is not only the quality and the result of the actual photographs because of your photographer but do you think as well it's because they're worried about how they will look Yes. yes. So it's body confidence thing as well, which I think is massive. Yeah. And wouldn't it be a shame to look at your photographs and hate yourself in them? That would be really, really sad. So I like to think that a lot of people, once you get your wedding photographs, you see past anything else yes. but yeah. the love that 
I think it's there. different because that has such an impact. It's such a happiness mm. that it's a very positive thing, isn't it? Mm. So inevitably your reactions and what people other people see is that happy positive person yeah yes um i i think it's difficult mm. um i have a real body image problem but then when i've seen you know i've done cakes with some uh, of my brides who've been quite big ladies been quite curvy mm. and yet they look gorgeous mm, yeah. because they put time and effort into what they're wearing and they know themselves and it's confident yeah, it's yes. more about choosing things that suit your body shape and your style and your yes. hair and your makeup and rather than being something you're not choose what you, you know are. yeah because i ask, i always ask my um brides um what outfit they're going to wear mm. because they're okay compliments their if they're wearing a dress it compliments mm. their dress you don't want something too big or too small yeah. um and everyone goes oh i don't know we uh, they always say you'll go for something that you would never go for where mm. the dress I've chosen I knew what I was going to go for it was mm. slightly different but the shape and everything because I know what suits me yeah. I know I do not suit a slinky little dress it doesn't I don't mm. want every single role on show so I chose mm. something that suits me and I feel comfortable in yeah. so then hopefully when I look at the photos I look yeah. really comfortable I think mm. if you feel comfortable mm. on the day that will reflect yes. in the photographs mm. if you're in something that isn't you and is I don't mm. know and you can't move yeah, yeah. then you can't you're not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to show so I think mm. that's yeah that's really important there's quite yeah. a few things in that isn't there yeah there is so um, with more and more couples opting for a more casual uh, wedding breakfast setup, do you think there should be assigned seating at a wedding reception or not Caroline I think it depends on the feel of the wedding and the vibe of the mm. wedding our wedding's going to be quite formal in some aspects um, and not so formal in others but I am very determined to have a seating plan because I don't want someone going oh I need to be sat over there with so and so and then you've got groups of people just sort of sitting mm. and socialising without paying attention to what's happening so yeah. I think it's good to mix people up but not to the extent where they don't know anybody that they're sat with because um, I've been like that at a wedding and yeah. it was really boring um, <laughs> so it's about being mindful <laughs> you're on that, yeah. that odd um, table at the um, back of friends, I was, random, yeah, random I was people like, but my, my girlfriends were on a completely different table sat together and I was on my own with other people um, and you can only have so much small talk Yeah. so aside, I, I think for me sign seating but be mindful of it yeah. but then I completely get the sort of random yeah. kind of seating as well but then my other problem is it depends on what kind of caterers you've got um, you know if you need to have, if you're having a sit down meal you need to know where you sat for practical reasons don't you so you yes. know who's getting what so. who's a vegetarian who's exactly. vegan who's gluten and yeah. you know anything really um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's a personal choice, but I'm a yeah. fan of being told where to sit. Mm. It's a one time, it's, you know, you don't get married every day. It's one time you do as you're told. Yeah, yeah. Get on with it. Get on oh, with it. Sit where you're told. You were a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sit. Yeah, sit mm. where you're told. Do what you're told for one day. And behave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a great believer in behave. Um, <laughs> you know, if it's a time and place, mm. I don't really have a definite view on it. I kind of like the kind. of easy going you know find yourself a seat but there are practicalities mm. and this is an occasion it's an event so yeah. inevitably there has to be some formalities mm. to it yeah. so I think maybe if that is the only time you have a formality is where people are sitting then yeah maybe there's the, mm. some merit to it mm. um, you know what you don't want is people deliberately trying to all cram 12 people around an eight yes. seat mm. so yeah. that there's three left on the other one do you know what I mean yeah. I don't that's all silly nonsense mm. also you don't want your neighbour that lives three doors down sat at the front by the top table no. and your granny right at the back. Yes, yeah, because true. it's you, you do it importance order, really, don't you? You know you're not yeah. a very important person when you sat at the back of the room. And it's <laughs> not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh no, I know. We do it, we all know this, don't we? Mm. Bridesmaids sit at the front and mm. and it works backwards. So yeah. I yeah. do like the idea. I've been to quite a few weddings really where the bride and groom have not sat the, the wedding party have not sat on a separate table mm. they've kind of you know the bridesmaids have mixed in with yes. other family and yeah. bride and groom have sat with important people yeah. i kind of like that i like yeah. that 
Also, it could create more awkwardness if you ask people to just sit where they want. Yeah. Then you mm. automatically are drawn towards a table of people you know. Yes. So what happens to the people that don't really know anyone? They must feel like really odd, or odd and really awkward. To just yeah. think, do you mind if we just perch? You know. <laughs> and also, it's, if there's like plates and things. Now I'm a bit fussy with stuff like this. So if, for example, I go and sit on table number six. Mm. And I leave a plate there, and then I come back, and someone's mm. gone and sat in my seat. Oh yeah. Oh, I've lost yeah. my handbag, or yeah. And then it's like, well, who's finished? Who's not? And it's just messy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when it comes to more evening food, and you're having pizza or burgers, mm. different matter. That's different. You can yeah. plonk yourself down, but yes. that's a more relaxed. But I don't know. I'm just a fan of seat and plan. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can't wait to see uh, what she produces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we, we're not having a formal top table for our wedding. Mm. Okay. Um, because Carl doesn't want everyone watching the meat. Um, yeah, it's which bit, I understand. It's a bit, it's a bit awkward. awkward. Yeah. It, yeah. And both of our parents are divorced. So mm. for us, we have mm. to separate parents. Um, so we'd have to have a seat in plan, otherwise all hell would break loose. But <laughs> it's kind of like... We're, we're, so we've, we've decided we're going to sit on a table with friends mm. instead. Yeah, nice. So as much as I... I love my parents, but nope, they're going over there, sort of thing. Yeah. So I remember because we, as well. we had a very traditional layout with round tables, and then we were all on a top table, yeah. and I was sat between John and my dad, and it was constantly like playing tennis, you know, with yeah. moving the head all the time. I was getting a stiff neck, and you can't have a conversation with anyone beyond who's sat next to you yeah. as well, yeah. and that became quite a struggle. And I think people underestimate the, the amount of time that you're spent sat down. Oh. It can be three hours with mm. food, speeches, everything else, so it's kind of got to work, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. But we did a poll on this on Instagram. We said, do you think there should be assigned seating at the reception? And 57% said, yep, keeps order. And forty three percent said sit where they want, which I think's quite high. I think that's yeah, quite, that's high. quite yeah. high. Yeah, maybe people are becoming a little bit more. Maybe it's the times we're living in. Yeah, and people are becoming a bit more like, do you know what? It's just there's a lot more outdoor weddings now mm. as well. Like they say, marquees, mm. teepees, etc. Barn yes. weddings a bit more relaxed vibe. A lot of people are having buffet style and burger vans and yes. pizzas and things. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe but, that's why as um, well. Or there's more. Not as many teachers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one bride messaged me um, separately following this poll with a really interesting point. She said, we allocated our guests with their tables but let people sit where they wanted on the table. Okay. It took away the carnage of who sits on which table but was less pressure over making people set, sit next to people they don't really want to seem to work well. So you're told you're on table number one, those yes. ten people, but you but choose your you seat. Sit. That's, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's that's a quite, that is a good idea. That's yeah. a kind of mix and match of both, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And in fact, one of my... Because we had... Um, who did we have one? To, oh, it was uh, John's parents' best friends and my parents' best friends mm. were on this table together um, simply because we didn't know where else to put them. <laughs> we we'll just put the friends with each other even though they mm. don't know each other. And actually, throughout the wedding breakfast, every half hour, they would swap seats. They would move, you know, every other person would switch. Oh, really? And they would do that so they would so get to know me. each person so, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's somebody else's pudding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. bet the caterers were like, "What on <laughs> earth is going on?" Yeah, but they said actually that worked really well. And did they do that just of their own volition? Yeah. What yeah. a great idea. Yeah. 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 So I thought it was quite interesting. Sort of thing my stepmom would do that. Yeah. She'd talk to everybody mm. on a mm. on a table. Because it is yeah. difficult when you've got so much going on on the mm. table as well. If you've got a centrepiece that you can't quite see the person over yeah. opposite yeah. you. Well, I have that a lot. A lot of people say to me, we don't want something tall because mm. we want people to be able to see. So we go yeah. to different mm. types of stands. We don't want... And it's a massive part of it. Yeah. It mm. really is. And having space on your table for your wine. But like you say, yes. it's all about where's the pudding. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> But where is like pudding? Move your pudding. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive thing. I think it, I think it's mm. quite interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very, very much dynamics of people, mm. isn't it? Mm. It is. There's all sorts of ways you could do it, I guess. So yeah. it's just whatever suits you and your venue. Mm. Yeah, fab. So mm. on that note, that rounds off episode two, and we'll be back with episode three very soon. But thank you so much for listening, and we'll chat to you later. Bye. 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 Bye.